Hi folks, Robert J.E. Simpson here once again. Thank you very much for stopping by the vlog today. And I want to look at one of my cinematic heroes, none other than the man on screen behind me here, Orson Welles, the great actor, director, filmmaker, raconteur, artist, whatever you want to think about, that was Welles himself. Um, he is a man full of personality and vision. And it's that vision, I think, which I most admire and respect. Um, he did try and work within the studio system at Hollywood, he made films like Citizen Kane and then The Magnificent Ambersons, which famously was taken off his hands and recut. Um, and after that, he sort of struggled. He tread this fine line between working for the studios, often appearing in films just to raise the money to go and create his own work. And that I love. That and his never say no attitude. He is somebody who, despite every bit of adversity, continued to try and produce work uh, and create a really unique crafted vision. He's someone I love, respect and admire and he's been quite important in terms of some of the own, my own projects. Um, so uh, in fact for the centenary back in 2015 uh, I was asked to put together a panel uh, in order to celebrate Wells and that panel directly led to the creation of the Sunny Punked project which I host and I'm a co-director of with my friend Rachel Kelly. Um, it's been a hugely important part of my work for the last few years and Wells I think is a really good example of that. He's somebody who sort of treads this line between this intellectual, academic sort of attitude but also a lot of popular um, sort of culture and attitudes as well. Um, something like his War of the Worlds adaptation which he did for the radio uh, as part of the Mercury Players um, was absolutely stunning and influential. And it's something that we've looked at ourselves uh, on occasion, most recently with our How to Survive the Outbreak, according uh, according to the movies piece that we did. Um, there was a little bit of Wellesian influence in that as well. And I have another little project that I'm working on at the moment that I hope to be able to tell you about um, somewhere in the next few months. But Wells was a, absolutely um, a stunning, amazing talent of a man. Um, this film here. Uh, the Lady from Shanghai, we actually covered on the Cinepunked uh, podcast um, very, very recently, so you can listen to that as well. It's a film which I have a lot of admiration for uh, as well. It has a great closing sequence set in a funfair, which has been skewed as gained by the, the, the studios at the time. Um, but I ended up in San Francisco uh, last year and I went out looking for the location where they shot that sequence, even though there's not very much of it there now. Um, I, I still went to that space and, and sort of just soaked up that atmosphere. I also went to Venice Beach in LA and I spent a couple of hours literally just walking around the few streets where he had shot that opening to A Touch of Evil, which is a really, really great opening sequence. If you've never seen it, it's well worth tracking down. You should be able to find it on YouTube. Um, but it's a film which which I love, even though it's not one of those films that's been tampered with by the studio system. It's not a completely Wellesian film. In fact, last night, <clears throat> just as this morning was turning in, I was working on this piece here. Um, this is the latest of my little portraits. You may have seen, if you've been following me on Instagram, that I've been doing these. Recently got back into my art. Um, and that was my little uh, piece of Wells as Hank Quinn in, in A Touch of Evil. It, it is a film that has resonated and today is his birthday. So it seems like a really, really appropriate bit of timing. Um, I want to recommend a book as well. Now, Simon Callow's studies of Orson Welles are absolutely fascinating. There's three volumes of those at the moment. There's a fourth one in production, which hopefully will take us up to the likes of F for Fake. Um, and they're absolutely well worth reading, very, very comprehensive, very, very in-depth, probably the most comprehensive study of Wells' work and life that have ever been produced. But I also want to recommend this book here. Uh, this is this is Orson Wells by Peter Bogdanovich. And this is essentially an oral history. It's a series of interviews that was conducted between Bogdanovich and Wells himself. And it's an absolutely fascinating read. Um, it doesn't get lauded in quite the same way that Hitchcock Truffaut does, but it is nonetheless a unique insight into one of the great visionary filmmakers of the 20th century and well worth anyone's money, got to be honest with you. Um, so yeah, so Wells was, was hugely, hugely important. And as we kind of set ourselves through the current creative, uh, well, the, the, the COVID crisis, one of the things I set up when I started doing these logs was to talk about the influence of creativity and how important it was. And I think Wells' attitude of constantly trying to do stuff, the way that he would just shoot little bits of film whenever he could. Um, there are sections that he shot just basically on his garden, um, little scenes that he then incorporated into other pieces or little stuff that just sort of sat in his archives, little sort of um, ideas, little sketches for things that would come to be. And I think it's a really, really good example and something that we can all lift from in terms of our own creativity. Um, 
so there's no reason why even though we can't go out and see our friends and hang around with other people there's no reason why we can't still use this time to to create something of ourselves to 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 basically just make our own little mark and it's something i think i've been trying to do i guess over the last few weeks in terms of my own uh, bits and pieces so that is what i'm going to take away from today that the wells's attitude of, of sort of just trying to do stuff is a, a really good idea um there is a film called one man band it's a little documentary film um, that you can find in the Criterion edition of F for Fake. Um, and I think it's also on some of the internet sites as well. Um, it's a really, really interesting piece. It includes a lot of little excerpts from some of the Wells products that never quite got finished. And again, it's a little handy snapshot and may provide you with some inspiration for your own stuff in whatever art form it is at all. Uh, Wells is hugely important. He's someone I'm going to come back to again uh, in my work. Uh, we have another cinepunk podcast with a Wells film uh, coming up this week. So check that out as well. Um, great great man great great talent 105 years no matter what you look at even a bad Orson Welles film is 10 times better than the best of a lot of other people so he's well worth spending your time and your money exploring um, anyway that's me for today um, hopefully I'll be back with you again tomorrow who knows see you soon